Welcome to our demo on getting started with Ansible, Maestro, and of course, GitHub to uh, keep track of your versioning. In this demo, we'll be installing Ansible on our control machine and then going ahead and getting our uh, GitHub repo all set up and configured. Um, as you can see, I am on an Ubuntu 20.04.5 uh, Linux VM. You can pretty much use any version of Linux as your Ansible control host. Um, you can actually even use Windows, but you have to use the, the Windows subsystem for Linux. So uh, I highly recommend just getting a Linux VM going. So we've got a PuTTY session, a terminal SSH'd into my VM, and I'm going to go ahead and install Ansible by running sudo apt update. Now, of course, I'm already uh, logged in as sudo, as you can see, I'm root, but uh, we'll go ahead and show you what this looks like using the sudo commands. sudo apt install software properties common. And now let's do sudo add apt repository with a switch of yes, update PPA Ansible, Ansible. And now that we have those dependencies, let's go ahead and run sudo apt install Ansible. And Y for yes. Okay, and now we have Ansible installed. Now, Ansible does use SSH in order to connect to other machines and, and orchestrate things, tell, it, tell those machines what to do. So you do need to make sure that Ansible is installed. Obviously, I have it because I am SSH'd into it right now, but if you are maybe at the terminal directly, um, just run a quick sudo apt install open SSH server. And then once you hit enter, you should be able to have SSH installed and, and and then, of course, um, use SSH. Now we're going to uh, jump into Git and GitHub for the rest of this session. In the next video, we'll dive more into how we can then start to use Ansible with Maestro. So, of course, you know, again, we don't have to go ahead and update this already because we've already done this update. But just for uh, completion's sake, I want to show everything. So let's run um, sudo apt install git. Yes. Now, of course, this installs uh, Git right here on your local machine so that you can use Git commands. Um, we will be using GitHub as our Git repository, um, but of course, we want to be able to work on this local machine. OK, so now that we have that installed, we'll go to a browser and check out what we have on GitHub. Now, this is my personal GitHub account. Um, you can see that I already have an Ansible Maestro repo, but let me show you how I uh, went ahead and set that up. So I took, I took my little shortcut here to uh, github.com slash men and mice slash Ansible underscore maestro. Um, you could also do a search for men and mice um, or for Ansible maestro, and I'm sure it will pop up very quickly. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to fork this repo. Forking just means I'm, I'm making a copy of it. So if I were to click on fork, um, I can create a new fork. And then I will select the owner. Now, of course, my fork already exists, but when you go through this exercise, your account should pop up if you have an account created already, and then you would select that. Um, then you can give it a description, of course. You can select whether to copy the main branch only or to copy all of the versions. Um, the main branch only is just fine. Um, and then go ahead and create fork. And then once you have your fork created, you should be able to go back to your own account, whatever that might be, and then um, see this Ansible underscore maestro uh, collection here. And this is the collection that we keep up to date so that you have all of the, the things at your fingertips that uh, you might possibly need to run um, Ansible commands for maestro. OK, so now that we have it forked, uh, let's go ahead and add it locally to our, our Ansible host, that Linux server that I showed you earlier. So in GitHub, um, on the you know, account slash maestro, Ansible underscore maestro, in my case, L Malhoy underscore Ansible maestro page, we're going to click on this code button here. 
and we are just going to copy the HTTPS option. So now that I have that copied, I can go back to my putty. And what I want to do is type git clone. And then I'm going to copy uh, what I, or paste what I copied um, from the GitHub page. And once I have that typed in, I am going to hit enter. Now here, we're actually copying this, this entire collection down to my local machine, right? So make sure that you're in a folder where you want this copied to. I probably should have mentioned that before we hit enter, but uh, here we are. Okay, so now if we type ls, we can see what is in here, and we do see that Ansible underscore maestro collection right there. Now we'll go ahead and jump into that directory. And what we're going to want to do is enter some information so that we don't get caught later. So what I'm going to do is uh, do git config global user.name and then put in my name. You can put in whatever name you like. And then we'll do a git config global user.email. And here I'm going to enter my work address, um, which by the way, you can always reach out to me if you're having any trouble, feel free to just email me and uh, let me know what you're, what you're having trouble with or, or what you love. Um, and now we can go ahead and make some changes to our repo. Again, kind of the steps that we followed here is that we created a fork in GitHub from the Men and Mice Ansible Maestro site um, or repo back to our own repo on GitHub. And now we've copied that repository down to our local machine as well. Um, and that's what we'll be working with is right here on our local machine. So let's get go ahead and type ls again and see what we have in here. So we, we see a lot of the same things that we saw up there on, on the GitHub repo, right? We have got our readme.md, our ansible.config, um, all sorts of files that we can play with. So just to show, you know, kind of how we manipulate these files and use them, um, with Git and GitHub, um, we're going to use a text editor to just change the README file. So if I do nano, because I like nano, um, and then do the readme.md, um, and we'll see then what it says. So you can see here, there is a uh, first edited on December 20th, 2022. But let's go ahead and change that to the, today's date, which is, in fact, January 3rd, 2023. And then we'll hit Control-O to save it. File name to write. Yes, we'll go ahead and save it to that file. And then we'll hit Control-X in order to get out of the uh, nano editor. Okay, so we've made changes to our local machine, but we have not made those changes or merged those changes into GitHub yet, where we're actually doing kind of this version control or version management. Um, so what we're going to do is type git status, and you can see um, right there in red, it says modified uh, readme.md. So that makes a lot of sense because that is the file that we've modified. Um, if we kind of want to see more information, we can type git diff to see the difference. So you can see right there in red, the old version said first edited on December 20th um, and the new version in green, which we'll add first edited on January 3rd, 2023. Um, so what we want to do now is type git add readme md what this is going to do is add this file to the files that we want to um, make sure that we are merging right um, so if we don't tell it that we this is one file that we want to add it's not going to know when we go to commit this to our repository up in github um, we could add several files in this way then right we, we would use git add to add several files and then we could commit in bulk but we only have the one file right now um, so now we're going to type git commit dash m. Dash m means that we want to um, add a message, basically. And of course, documentation is always encouraged. So committing means that we are committing this change to, you know, the, the permanent file, right? Um, so let's just say we updated readme.md. 
And that will be our message then up on GitHub if we want to see a history. And we'll hit enter. Okay, updated readme.md. Now we're not quite there yet. What we have to do is push this then to um, our origin main is what it's called now. Um, so we're actually pushing this commit up to uh, the GitHub repository. So we'll say git, git push origin main. And our username for GitHub is Now, of course, you'll have your own username and your own password. Now, I, I did know this was going to happen. So as of uh, August 13th, 2021, um, GitHub actually took away the ability to use password authentication over HTTPS. So what we're going to have to do is find our personal token. So let's go ahead and go back to GitHub. So now if I click on my uh, account button over here and go to settings, and then we'll scroll down and we'll go to developer settings. Now here I see uh, personal access tokens and that is exactly what we want. You can see I've created a few tokens, um, but let's say I have to generate a new one um, just to show um, how this all works. We can give it a description if we want, type in Ansible. Uh, we'll leave it at the 30-day expiration mark, and then we'll choose. If you want to do granular permissions, um, you can, of course, you know, get extremely granular in here. Um, I'm just, for the sake of speed, I'm just selecting everything, and we'll generate a new token. Oh, and we'll change my description here to something that hasn't already been, been taken, and we'll generate a new token. Okay, and then we'll copy that token and go back to our putty session. And here we'll then do a git push origin main again, just like we did before. And we'll enter our username and our, instead of entering a password here, what we're going to do is enter or paste in that, um, that new personal access token. Now, of course, you can't see that I entered anything and that's, uh, you're not going to be able to see anything, so it's just kind of a leap of faith. Um, but as you can see, it did work that I was able to then log in and push all of this information to my GitHub repository. So how can we prove that? Well, let's go back to my GitHub repository and we'll click on Ansible Maestro. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the readme.md file. And we can see that this was in fact pushed, um, that we committed these changes and now it's up in my repo because it says January 3rd, 2023 instead of December 20th. That's all we have for this video. In the next video, we'll dive into using uh, Ansible with Maestro more. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you in the next one.